Earlier this year, Fervo Energy, a geothermal company based in Houston, announced a historic breakthrough. They announced they had built one of the world's first enhanced geothermal power plants. This announcement caught the attention of climate and energy experts all around the world because it was unlike every existing geothermal power plant. Instead of tapping a traditional hydrothermal reservoir, effectively a hot pool of water under the Earth's surface, Fervo drilled into a chunk of hot rock, cracked open fissures, and then pumped water through it. In this way, they used oil and gas fracking technology to generate clean energy. If Fervo Energy and other geothermal companies can scale this technology, they could solve one of clean energy's biggest problems. They could create clean power that operates at every hour of the day, no matter the weather. In this video, we're gonna explore the history of geothermal power, why enhanced geothermal power is having a moment right now, and how this technology could have a huge impact on our clean energy future. The first thing that you need to know about geothermal power is that the Earth is very hot. So hot right now. The core of the Earth is about as hot as the surface of the sun, reaching temperatures in excess of 6,000 Celsius or 10,000 Fahrenheit. Even a few thousand feet beneath the surface, the temperature of the Earth can be a few hundred degrees Fahrenheit. This heat reaches the surface in volcanically active places like Japan and near tectonic plates like in Iceland. For thousands of years, humans have been using some of this heat to bathe and cook. But it wasn't until the beginning of the 21st century that anyone learned to use geothermal to generate electricity. The first geothermal power generator was built in Tuscany in 1904. At its peak, the four kilowatt system could power five light bulbs. By the 1950s and 60s, developers began building the first large scale geothermal power plants. In 1960, a company in California built what would eventually become the world's largest power plant in an area known as the geysers. At this point, however, fossil fuels still reigned king in America and much of the world. Coal, oil, and gas were all cheap, densely packed with energy, and easily transported over long distances. But this era of cheap and abundant energy didn't last long. In the early 1970s, geothermal received a boost when energy prices skyrocketed due to the first oil crisis. In America, Japan, and other countries with geothermal resources, governments passed laws incentivizing this new energy technology. In some countries like Iceland, geothermal power became one of the largest sources of electricity. But in America and most other countries, this period of growth for geothermal power was short-lived. By the end of the 1980s, energy prices had fallen and interest in renewable energy had waned. At this time, the geothermal industry also encountered a problem that would plague its development for decades to come it ran out of usable resources. Three ingredients are necessary to build a traditional geothermal power plant. Heat, water, and permeable rock. If you're not a geology expert, permeability is basically how much water can move through rock. You can think of permeable rock like a sponge. Water can easily move through it. As geothermal developers tried to build more power plants, they learned that these three things are actually really rare to find altogether. And this is the problem that enhanced geothermal systems aim to solve. In a system like this, engineers drill down into hot rock, which is basically everywhere on Earth, and fracture it, creating permeability. In doing this, they enable water to pass through the rock. Then they pump water through this porous rock, where it heats up and eventually comes back to the surface, where it can be used to spin a turbine. In effect, enhanced geothermal creates resources where they otherwise wouldn't exist. And while many of us are just now learning about this technology, the reality is it's been around for decades. In the 1960s, a group of engineers working on nuclear weapons technology at the Los Alamos National Laboratory decided to begin tinkering with a side project. One of them, Bob Potter, had been reading At the Earth's Core, a fantasy novel, when he decided to deviate from some of his research on bombs and weapons. Potter had stumbled upon research from the oil and gas industry on hydraulic fracturing technology. He learned that offshore drilling companies were blasting rock beneath the surface with high pressure water to create fissures and unlock new oil and gas reservoirs. Around that same time, he and a number of other scientists at Los Alamos began discussing another related idea. What if they wondered it was possible to harness the vast amount of energy under the Earth's surface to create electricity? They concluded the vast thermal reservoir represented by hot dry rock was an energy supply that could and should become extremely important in the world's energy future. And thus the Los Alamos hot dry rock program was born. In total, it would take more than a decade and a half for the researchers at Los Alamos to prove that enhanced geothermal was possible. In May 1985, the group finally created a system that could generate between 4 and 10 megawatts of power. But while the researchers at Los Alamos proved the viability of enhanced geothermal, they also proved that it was difficult and more importantly expensive to harness the Earth's heat. 
1995, the Department of Energy killed the project and plugged the boreholes, beginning a long winter for the technology. Around that same time, however, another technology that would eventually transform geothermal power was about to take off. The issue of fracking. 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 Around the turn of the 20th century, two technologies transformed the oil and gas industry, fracking and horizontal drilling. Both of these technologies on their own had been around for a long time. But at the end of the 1990s, companies began to combine them. Together, the two technologies made it possible to extract fossil fuels where no one thought possible. And it's difficult to overstate just how much this revolutionized the global energy industry. In 2000, fracking was responsible for less than 1% of oil and gas production in the United States. In 2022, it was responsible for 66% of oil production and 80% of natural gas production. To put that in context, fracking made it possible for the US to produce an additional 2.8 billion barrels of oil every single year. This surge in production led America to become a net exporter of energy after decades of reliance on foreign countries. All of this was a complete disaster for the environment. Fracking has led to billions of tons of carbon emissions, worse air quality, and poisoned water supplies. But if there's a silver lining in any of this, it's the fact that you can use much of this technology to create enhanced geothermal systems. In economics, there's this idea of spillover, where innovation in one industry leads to innovation in another. In some cases, an emerging industry can piggyback off the success of one with far more capital. And this is what's happening in the geothermal industry today. Companies like Fervo Energy, the one I mentioned at the beginning of this video, are using drilling technology used for fracking oil and gas to bring down the cost of enhanced geothermal systems. And the thing to understand about spillover is that it can lead to a huge amount of innovation in a relatively short amount of time. The Sony Walkman has forever changed the way the world listens to music. For example, in the 1990s, electronics manufacturers made big advancements in lithium-ion batteries for consumer products. As companies like Sony produced more and more products like the Walkman, they figured out how to make batteries that were small, energy-dense, and cheap. Then, many years later, car companies like Tesla used that same technology to make electric vehicles. This kind of innovation can lead to changes in the world that are often difficult to predict. In the 1990s, lithium-ion batteries cost $7,500 per kilowatt hour. At that price, it would cost $500,000 to make the battery for a Tesla. At that time, no one would have predicted the EV revolution. But thanks in large part to innovations in consumer electronics, the price of these batteries plummeted to $137 per kilowatt hour, a staggering 97% decline. Today, many enhanced geothermal companies are hoping that this can take place in their industry. And they aren't the only ones that hope this will be the case. In the last three years, policymakers have passed a number of bills encouraging enhanced geothermal development. California's Utility Commission recently passed a bill mandating that utilities buy one gigawatt hour of clean firm power like geothermal. In 2021 and 2022, the federal government passed bills with tax credits and R&D money for the new technology. Some of that money funded a test project in Utah that successfully built an enhanced geothermal system. And more recently, the Department of Energy issued a report showing a pathway where the cost of this technology could come down by 90% and eventually power more than 10% of America's electricity. Still, there are significant barriers that must be overcome for all this to happen. Fervo Energy's milestone was important, but whether or not the system can scale and come down the cost curve is still to be determined. Geothermal developers will also face regulatory hurdles. On public land where most wells are likely to be drilled, environmental reviews for projects take between seven and 10 years. By contrast, oil and gas companies have a loophole around all of this and can permit new wells in just a few years. But if enhanced geothermal can overcome these barriers, it could transform our clean energy future.